We are so lucky to have our ARS president, Jolene Adams, come and give us a program. She is so busy, and we are so happy that she takes time to come and give us a program here. So thank you very much, Jolene. Are you going to use this mic? Okay. Thank you, Barbara. I just want to thank you all for inviting me back. I guess I didn't wear out my welcome last time I was here. And to say, I've been doing this particular program, Climbers, for a long time. And the reason I started talking about Climbers is people were getting very, very confused about what exactly was a climber. Because they would see a miniature dis described as climbing a ruby pendant, or a mini flora climbing Valentine's Day, or a hybrid tea climbing Aloha. And that's not those roses' names. But our vendors out there put climbing in front of them so that the buying public would understand that these are not going to stay nice little bushes. They're going to take off. But we, as Rosarians, when we use the name of a rose, we like to use the proper name of the rose without all of that stuff. So I got very interested in it and started studying about climbers, where they came from, how did they get here, which ones are and which ones aren't. And I came up with a program. So let's go, John. So we're going to talk about climbers. Climbers can be found in every single style or classification of roses that we have. You'll find them among miniatures and minifloras. You'll find them in the old garden roses. You'll find them in modern roses. You'll even find species roses that climb. They're everywhere, everywhere. And we're really broad when we talk about climbing roses. We will mean not only the actual show class that is called large flowered climbers, but we mean roses that have that climbing habit. They're also considered climbers, but not for show. So let's get into this. The large flowered climbers, that's the actual show category that you'll find in rose shows all over the world. Not only here in America, but in other countries, in their rose shows, they define their climbers because this is an international category. So the large flowered climber, specific show class, and only a rose that is classed in this group can be shown as a large flowered climber. This class is descended from those old time roses that came out of China. Most of the old, old, old China roses are just way bold climbers. They, they get out of control. The LCLs, they usually have really large, large around, very stiff canes, and they grow fast. They're very vigorous. We also, into that class, have put hybrid Wichiranas, which are the rambling roses. You remember about 20, 25 years ago, we actually had a display class called Ramblers. But um, the international governing body for classification got on us about that and made us stop doing it. So we had to go through all of those Ramblers and put them into the other classes where they belong. So there are a few, usually the Wichirana hybrids, that are considered climbers because there is just no bush form. They don't grow as bushes no matter what you do. They climb. And then the hybrid giganteas. These are very, very large, tall roses, and they are directly descended from gigantea, which is a single species rose with a real pretty creamy white petal. It looks thick, like thick, heavy paper. It's very, very pretty. Um, bloom falls off in about two days, though, so you have to get to it while it's fresh. But this loving little plant can go 50 feet tall. 
So you, you best have room if you're going to grow Gigantea. This is an example of a large flowered climber. Everybody recognizes this rose as a climbing rose. This is Altissimo. Altissimo has seven or more petals. It's, con it's considered a semi-double, not a single, because it, it usually has up to 11 petals, and you just can't pick those petals off and make a single rose out of it. It's very obvious you've messed around with it. But this is a representative of the large flowered climbers. This is a representative of a climbing miniature. This is a little rose about an inch and a half across. This is called Hi Ho. It's a Ralph Moore introduction from 1964. And it's still going strong. You can get it at miniature specialty nurseries. It will go about eight feet tall, needs to be tied to a trellis. And it's a cute little thing because the edges of the petals are slightly fringed. It's called Picati. And it's almost like a carnation, but it's still a rose shape. So you know it's a rose. Very cute little thing, vigorous, very glossy foliage. It will get mildew because back in the 60s, they weren't hybridizing for disease resistance yet. So you have to understand that you're gonna have that spring and fall, but in the summer, it's gonna be just fine if you would like to try a little climbing miniature. In the shrubs and the OGRs, lots of those roses climb. This is an example. This is Celine Forestier. It is a noisette from 1842. Very, very pale yellow. A little pip for an eye. Not a button, but a pip. Very fragrant, very nice glossy green foliage. Vigorous, replete repeats and it will go eight, maybe nine feet here in California. This one is a good one for a pergola so that the blooms are up just above your head as you walk underneath and the fragrance is flowing out and down. So you're always bathed in fragrance if you're underneath this. And an example of the modern climber, a climbing hybrid tea or a climbing grandiflora would be this rose. This is Aloha. It is a climbing hybrid tea, medium pink, 49 petals, fragrant, very dark, leathery, tough foliage, and it'll go up to about 10 feet. And it is a rebloomer. However, if you show it, you don't call it climbing Aloha. Its name is only Aloha and it will be shown in the hybrid tea class, not as a climber, because it's a hybrid tea with a climbing habit. Floribundas and polyanthas also have climbing roses. This is Cecile Bruner. Now we've talked many times, and other people have also probably explained to you that Cecile Bruner has about four different clones out there. You can get a bush version, which is pretty good, and you can get a bush version that is horrible, doesn't bloom a lot. You can get a climbing version that eh, might go four, five, six feet and bloom sporadically, and then you can get the original Madame or Mademoiselle Cecile Bruner, and it is a very vigorous climber. It's the one that you remember and you see going up this arch. It will go 12 to 15 feet tall. And as a typical polyantha, the leaves on the little stem stop and then you've got wiry little fingers going out with a bloom at the top of each one of them. So you've got these long bare stems with blooms hanging down, little sweetheart roses, pink and perfect. She's from 1894, she's an old lady. And you have to show her as a polyantha, not as a climber, because she's a polyantha with a climbing habit. Now, if you're interested in climbers, if you want to go out and get one and try it in your yard, you, you need to really consider these things. 
Have you got room for it? What about the size of the climber? And is it going to be a floppy climber? Or is it going to go straight up? Is it going to be stiff? Is it going to be wiry? What about the shade? Can it take a little shade? Or does it need all the sun it can get? Is it disease resistant? You really want it to be disease resistant. Because think, if you've got a climber that wants to go 15 feet tall, are you going to take that down and lay it out on the grass so that you can spray it? No. Get, get something that's manageable if you spray. If you don't spray, go for it. If you have a jungle for a backyard or farm acreage, go for some of these big babies. They need homes too. What about rebloom? Some of the climbers are only once bloomers. Others are repeat bloomers. What are you interested in? Remember that with once blooming roses, usually that bloom is for a long duration, sometimes up to two months of continuous pouring out of flowers before it finally runs out of juice and stops blooming. It never sets another flush. Okay, so what are you looking for in that department? And then color and style. The face of the rose. Do you want one that looks like a hybrid tea? Or do you want one that's round and soft and very old-fashioned? Or do you want one of those crazy ones with the wild colors and the silly little fringy petals and things like that? We've got them all. You can go shopping, find exactly what you want. Climbing roses have many landscape uses, not just to just sit there for you, but they can cover a fence or a structure they can go over arches. You saw a picture. They can be placed to go against a wall and soften that really hard texture. They could screen a really bad view. You could plant it between you and your neighbor that's got 15 motorcycles and an old bathtub in the backyard. They'll make a statement or they'll fill a void. They can bring your eyes up, up into the garden. And you can use them in rock gardens. There are climbers that, instead of going up, they go down. They dribble down rock gardens and over the side of walls, and they sprawl and they tumble. And they're great for hanging baskets. All kinds of roses with that climbing habit in many, many dimensions. Here's an example of using a climbing rose to cover a structure. This is Paul's Scarlet Climber, and it is on a lath house a potting shed, if you will. Uh, looks very nice. It only blooms once. Starts blooming about the second week of May, and it will go until the end of June. So that's a long bloom period for a once bloomer. And then it's over. You can put them on arches. You see a lot of this in public parks. You see pictures of the European parks where they've got great swags of climbing roses along fence lines and over arches and scrambling up a tree. This is white Dorothy. It's a hybrid witcherana, one of those rambling roses that are in the climber class. Little white pom-poms, not, not too fragrant, but it blooms over and over and over and over. So you'll always have snow on the ground. Here's an American pillar. It can be used to soften that hard look of a wall or a buttress. This one is flowing over its planter and cascading down. It is also a Witcherana Rambler, about three inches in size, and the blooms are singles. Very nice, light fruit fragrance. Only blooms once, but for a long time, again. And it was introduced in 1902. This particular climber is being used to screen that neighbor that we talked about with the motorcycles and the bathtub, except this particular neighbor had an old toilet and it was being used to pump water into what he called a fish pond. Ugh. But the rose was okay. It's on the fence. I'm on the other side. So I'm looking through the rose to see what he's got going in his yard that they don't want us to see. 
This is a noisette, and it grows, oh, about 20 feet tall if you want it to, but the stems on this aren't really stiff. They don't want to go straight up. They'll go about eight to 10 feet and then arch over. So you can see it's nice for this kind of a use. It's making this kind of a, a picture and the blooms are nodding. They hang and they look at you. So when you walk along, they're up above your head. Very fragrant. Very nice light green foliage to go with that lemony yellow color. 20 feet in all directions. You can make a statement. Here's Gloire de Dijon. I, did, I slurred that one. I'm not good with French. This is a climbing tea, not a hybrid tea, a tea rose. A climbing tea, tea rose with a climbing habit. Okay. From China, it was introduced in 1853. It's got some fragrance. It tries to repeat. It'll squeeze out a few blooms in uh, September or October, but it is a heavy spring bloomer. Very, very vigorous. It can go 15 feet. It's easily going up the, the brick wall here, and they keep clipping it back so that the car can go in and out of that arched opening to get into the shed. But it's a nice color against that mellow yellowy brick. You can draw the eyes up into the sky. This is Handel. This is a really nice rose. Looks pink to everybody. It's called a red blend. It's actually a white rose with rosy pink edges and it ages out to where the edges go almost through the center, okay? It's a Magritte rose. It's tough. It's hardy. It's got a kind of a almost honeysuckle fragrance, very light, very airy, and it blooms over and over and over. It is vigorous, and it goes up. Mine is about 12 and a half feet tall. I keep topping it because I'm not supposed to get on a ladder anymore. So I can only do this when my son isn't coming to visit. Get on the short ladder, top it, get off the ladder, hope I don't fall. You and going up a Christmas tree. <laughs> it looks like it, it doesn't. It? It's actually up a pillar. There's a, a round, like a telephone pole, skinnier, going straight up. And the rose has been wrapped on it like that, and it's just going up that. And it loves it. And there's a big tree behind it. So it does look like it's going up the Christmas tree. Yeah, they go up. And actually, that was taken in the uh, San Jose Garden many, many years ago. I don't even know if it's still there. You can use climbers as a cascading effect. This is a, a polyantha with a climbing habit. It's called Phyllis Bide and it's just a little fluffy bloom. It doesn't have the sweetheart rose form. When it opens, it's just a little ball that opens, and the blooms started out yellow, and then they get pinky pinky as it ages. And it stays on the branch for a long time, about a week, week and a half. You can have it make like little basket balls, you know, little round clump of all of these roses. Or you can cut it back like this lady did. She's got it flat on an upside down triangle trellis and she just clips it to make sure it stays back. Otherwise, it would want to put out long runners going straight out from the main trunk. And then at the end of every single one of them is another clump of blooms. That can be attractive, that can be interesting, but it's better to shear it and shape it and make it do what you want it to do. And remember, it is a polyantha. It blooms over and over and over. It has the climbing habit, and about 10 feet is, is as much as it can pull off. How would you plant this? Just like any other rose. 
few special considerations. The hole that you want to plant the rose in should be about a foot away from any foundation, whether, whether you plant it against a wall or on a trellis or in front of a tree or something like that, a good foot away. And the reason is when this large plant really gets into its own at two years old, three years old, four years old, there's a lot of rose bush there. And it's full of leaves, full of branches. If it's too close to the wall, it's going to make a perfect little pocket for spider mites. It will be warm and dry back there. Now, if you get it away from the wall, the breezes can go back and forth. Spider mites aren't too happy about that. And spider mites are definitely not happy about water. Water will interrupt their breeding cycles and drowns the eggs and the little ones. So you always want to have room between your climber and any sturdy surface so that you don't have this pest in the back. And you'll know if you get spider mites, even in your bushes, because all of a sudden the leaves start looking drier and drier. They don't change colors. They're green and they're drying up and they're dying because all of their lifeblood is being sucked out of them by spider mites. So that hole has to come a foot away from your foundation. And then just as with bush roses, when you set it in, make sure if it's grafted, that the graft is at ground level. She's put the shovel across to use it as a level so that she can get the graft right where it's supposed to be. If it's on its own roots, it's going to have ring around the collar. When they dug it up, it'll be stained by the dirt that it was growing in. So you want that ring right at ground level. So you plant it just as any other rose, but keeping in mind it's going to be big when it gets into the teenage years. So you want it at least a foot away from whatever it's going to be tied to. Now here's the exciting part about climbers. It takes a little more work. So you have to be willing to do this, otherwise the climber is going to own you instead of you owning the climber. You need to know, either figure it out or have someone tell you or read about it, does the climbing rose that you are planting bloom on the old wood from last year or on the new wood that was being made this year? Where are the blooms going to come from? Because this is the same question you ask when you have an old garden rose as versus a modern rose. If it blooms only on the old wood from last year and you prune that wood off in December and January at your normal pruning time, you're going to prune off all the old wood and you won't get any blooms. Okay? The old wood that was going to have buds on it, like a camellia, if you prune it off at pruning time, you get no blooms. On the other hand, if it will bloom on the new wood, it's okay to prune it when you prune all your hybrid teas and your modern roses because it's going to make new branches starting in February and March, and then it'll bloom just as the other roses do. So you need to know which way it goes. Some climbers do both. In which case, if they do both, then just prune them as if they're a modern rose. Doesn't matter. Okay, how tall do you want it to get? Some people will get a climber and discover it wants to be 30 feet tall and it's going to demand that it can be 30 feet tall. And I'm thinking of Sally Holmes. Sally Holmes is a lovely, lovely shrub that climbs. Mine has gone past the uh, second floor of my house and is going for the third, okay? I cut it back to about eight feet tall every January, just so during the season it won't go all over the top of the roof because I know it'll keep going. And then the next year I'm going to cut it all the way down to eight feet tall again. You need to know how tall does it want to be and how tall do you want it to be. You can keep topping a climber, 
but pretty soon you're going to run out of blooming wood. It has to regenerate. That's why when I cut mine down to eight feet, she makes new branches for new blooms, okay? How wide do you want it? Some climbers will grow in a nice column, a nice, nice column, like a, a poplar tree, okay? Some want to sprawl and go sideways. If they're sideways, you can't make them stay compact and tidy. If you keep cutting the branches off, finally that climber will give up. Are the canes that you're going to work with hard to bend or easy to bend? Are they big, tough, fat ones, or are they little, thin, wiry ones? It will determine how you're going to prune that rose. And whatever you do, wherever you plant your climber, don't let it weave back and forth through a trellis or a fence. This is Cecile Bruner. And that's a lath, you know, the four by eight lath sheets. The, the stem of that that you see coming through and going back out every year is getting bigger around and bigger around and bigger around and eventually it got big enough it broke the fence. So don't do that. The whole idea of tying the climber to the support so that it stays upright, you tie it to the front of the support. You don't weave it in and out. You just tie it to the front. That way, when it comes time to prune it, you can just cut the ties, let it flop over on the ground, and you can prune it at knee level where you can reach it, and you pick it back up and tie it up again. We'll get to that later. Sounds complicated, but it's not. It's a lot easier than getting on ladders and trying to prune a climber. That's something you really don't want to do. Okay. Oh, good. You can see it. This was a good illustration, and I didn't realize how hard it was to see on smaller screens, but this one is good. It's about those once blooming climbers. They only bloom one time a year for a long time. With them, you're going to have to save some of the wood. Ramblers do this a lot, too. You want to watch it. It's like a, a raspberry, a red raspberry, or a blackberry, or a bramble bush. If you grow berries, you'll know. The canes that came out and set flowers, after they've bloomed, you want to cut them down all the way to the ground because they're not going to bloom again. They've only bloomed once, and that's all they're going to do. Once those old canes bloom, cut them out. Meanwhile, that root mass in the ground is sending up new, juicy, green canes. As those come up, they're not going to bloom. Remember, it's, it wants to bloom on old wood, so they have to be growing for a year. Next year is when they're going to bloom. So meanwhile, you just tie them to the support to keep them from flopping on the ground or whatever. And be careful. Be nice to them. But the old ones, after they bloom, out they come. That's basically what this chart is saying. And that's for the once blooming, like ramblers and the old garden climbers. For the modern roses, you treat them just like a hybrid tea. In this case, you only take out dead or diseased or dying canes and you cut them all the way back. You will, in February or January, whenever you do your normal pruning for the repeat bloomers, you'll look at the mass of canes coming out of the ground and decide you want between five and eight of the really thick, juicy canes like big, fat asparagus spears. Those are the ones you want. And anything that's old, that is turning gray, has wrinkles, is an old cane, uh, it's used up most of its flower buds, that one you cut as close to the ground as possible. Okay? So you've got those five to eight good green ones, and you're going to prune them like this. The lady has already cut canes out down at the bottom. You can see that. They're just laying on the dirt. And the laterals, 
you know, the, the stems that went sideways out of those main canes, she, have, she has cut them back so there's like two leaf nodes on each one left, like spurs. This is a style that we get from people who grow grapevines. Works very well on roses too, especially the climbers. So you choose your canes, you cut the side branches back to two buds each, and then you're going to tie it to the support. So she's going to put it on her fence. And you notice she's fanning it out, looks pretty good. There's gonna be four in each direction. When she gets them out like that, as far as she wants them to go, she's going to clip off the end, clip off the tip to stop it from going any further, okay? That only works for about seven months, but you're gonna cut it next year anyway, so you don't need to let them go where they want to go. You tell them no, and you clip the tip off, okay? So she's got it all spread out, nice and tidy, and is tying it up, tipping it as necessary. It's easy, it just takes time, because it's so much more rows than you're used to working with, because these things are big. How do you tie the canes? You use a square knot, if necessary, there's two different ways. You're gonna loop it around the support, twist it a couple of times, and then loop it around the cane, but leave it loose because the cane needs some wiggle room, back and forth wiggle room. If you tie it too tight during the growing season on these really rampant growers, they're going to increase in size sideways, getting fatter and fatter, and you'll actually girdle your cane because the rope will get too tight. So you want it nice and loose so it can wiggle a little bit. This lady used clear, stretchy gardening tape for hers, which is fine. You can do that. I thought it was kind of interesting because right at the cross piece of her trellis, one of the thorns has stabbed right through the tape. That's okay. Clear tape works, green tape works. A really nice, easy thing that works are old knee highs or old pantyhose that are cut into strips because they're stretchy. They're usually brown. Uh, you don't notice them once you've got foliage and they move and they wiggle and the cane won't get compressed. And the next year when you prune, you're gonna cut them off anyway. Deadheading, same idea as with any rows. Basic idea for deadheading is to take the spent flower off and leave a couple of buds so it will set another stem which will grow and make another rose. Now, with climbers, because roses have apical dominance, that means the bud at the top of a stem is the boss. All the rest of the buds going down the stem have to wait. There are chemical, chemical signals going up and down the cane and they will have to wait. The boss gets to bloom first. So if you lay a cane of a climber over anywhere around in here, all of the little buds on that cane think they're at the top. They are now each one a little boss. And they can all make a stem and make a bloom. That's why you see climbers fanned out on trellises or wound around so that the top of the cane where the little buds are can make blooming or fruiting stems, okay? So for deadheading, you can see the branch was coming out. It was pruned there and a new branch came out of the leaf node. It bloomed, it was pruned again, another branch came out, there's a big bloom on it. You're gonna cut that one. You're gonna cut it back to the first five leaflet, probably. And 
Uh, they say that little three leaflet thing, remove it. I never bothered to remove it. it. The idea in the old days was that it was sucking nutrition out. And I'm thinking, it's a chlorophyll factory. It's putting nutrition in as much as it's taking nutrition out. Just leave it there. If the rose doesn't want that leaflet there, it'll turn yellow and fall off. The rose can get rid of its own leaves. So I'd go down to a five leaflet and cut there and let it make another bloom, just as if this was a bush rose. That's why we leave on that arm, remember the lady was tying to the fence and she had the little spurs with two nodes. Each one of those nodes had its chance to break into a bloom. One of them will have made a stem with a bloom. You can cut down and get two or three or four blooms and then if you want to cut that off, the other one will take its turn and two or three or four. You'll get blooms all year long that way and a happy rose. Here are some climbers that you might consider trying. These work in our climate. A lot of climbers require chill hours that we no longer have. As you know, our fruit orchards cry about this. Our winters are getting warmer instead of cooler, so we're losing our chill hours. These roses will be okay, and we're not too hot. This is Alberic Barbier. This is a Wichirana Rambler, and when these are Pumping out these little blooms, it looks like scrambled eggs all over the bush. That yellow, creamy center and then the white around it. Very small, very fragrant flowers. Only blooms once a year, but for about five to six weeks. And it can climb about 15 feet tall. It likes warm weather. Here's Aloha, we saw it earlier. This is the hybrid tea that climbs. This is America. This is a large flowered climber that does very well in the warmer parts of the Bay Area. Dublin, San Ramon, Pleasanton, they've got these all over and they're beautiful. Very, very husky, disease resistant, fragrant, nice looking roses, about 12 feet tall. Here's Antica 89. Not enough people tried this, I have one. It's from Cordis. It is a true large flowered climber, very glossy foliage, quite disease resistant. Now Cordis is known for cold tolerant roses. This one doesn't have to worry. I live in Hayward. It's not that cold. It's oddly enough, it's a white rose with pink edges. And if you show it, the judges are going to go crazy because it's a pink looking rose. They just can't believe it's white. That round one there in the center, it looks like a hockey puck. It's about one and a half to two inches tall and so many petals that it's just like a, a biscuit or a hockey puck packed full of petals. So you actually have to fan them open to see the white backside of the petals to convince the judge that it's actually a white rose. No fragrance at all, unfortunately. Blaze of Glory. Um, Jackson and Perkins came out with Blaze back in the 50s and then improved Blaze and then further improved Blaze. And then as they worked on roses and got the same color of roses but it was a better climber, it was blaze of this and blaze of that and blazing inferno and this is blaze of glory. One of the uh, blaze roses, okay? It's a musky smelling rose. Not quite sure, you know. Uh, about four inches around on the blooms. They really don't have hybrid tea form. They try, but they're pretty. They last a while, very vigorous, it will grow and about uh, 14 feet maximum, and then it just poops out. Oddly enough, you know, they're, they're sucking water up with their roots, 
pulling it up those stems, and it can only keep going just so long, and the hydrostatic pressure gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and then they just can't go any further. So that's, that's what terminates them so that they don't go too tall. Here's Candyland, a nice striped climber, and yes, it does have that hybrid T shape. It will have that for about a day and a half, and then it goes ahead and fully opens, and it's just a fluffy pink and white striped rose. Very nice, um, not much with disease. I rarely see anything on it. The fragrance is kind of like green apple. It's maybe 12 feet tall. I have it on the fence in the back. It's a nice rose. Buff Beauty, an old one, but a good one. It's a hybrid musk. It's, uh, it can be entered in the classic shrub class because that's what it is. It's a shrub with a climbing habit. Uh, buff Beauty can climb to about 12 feet. Nice buff colored roses, very large, very fragrant, will tolerate some shade, will get mildew if you put it in the shade, and can go to about 12 feet. But it's a nice rose. This is Cornelia. This is another hybrid musk, but these are small, little, about an inch and a half to two inches across, and in sprays. Look at all those buds ready to pop open. Um, this little girl will also go to 12 feet. Cute little thing. And as a hybrid musk, she can go as a classic shrub. Don Juan. This is from the late 50s, and it's an excellent, excellent fence runner. It's good on a fence. It stay, it's, it's a low climber, and it does like to kind of go sideways. So if you plant it, close to the fence post and let it go in both directions, it will go for about 12 feet. Very nice dark red climber. Here's Dortmund. This is a cordis rose. It's a kind of a medium brick red color. Clear, very large. It is fragrant. It doesn't seem to get a lot of diseases, so it's a good one to have and it blooms over and over and over and over in big clusters like this also, big clusters. It will, it will go over six feet and head for 10. So it's a short climber, if you want to call climbers short. Here's 4th of July, made a big splash for us some years back. This was uh, Tom's winter red and white stripes, and yes, they look red and white just like that. Tom Carruth said it won't really do much until the second year. Uh, there are two clones of this on the market. One is a bad one. If you get a 4th of July that does not bloom the first or the second year, you got the bad clone. Just take it out and start again. It should have at least a couple of blooms the very first year you put it in the ground more the second, and it just goes nuts by the third year. And it does take climbers about three years to get going. They seem to spend that first year working on their roots, getting enough roots down there to support that massive burst of growth they're gonna put on when they're teenagers in their second year. So maybe that's what's going on with most of them taking their time and people thinking, oh, I got a dud, it's just, it's a bush, it's not climbing until, whoa, whoa, they go out one morning and they have spikes. I've never noticed fragrance on the 4th of July, but some people do, so I believe it. Okay. Here's Fred Lodes. This is really orange. If you like orange, this is really orange. It's a shrub, and it will climb about 10 feet tall, and it blooms in clusters. Very disease resistant nice clusters. It uh, was classed as a single rose. It might now have too many petals. You're going to have to count because it can only have up to eight. And here's Golden Gate from Cordis. This is a deep yellow. It's got a very fruity, lemony fragrance. Very dull colored foliage. It is dark, but they're not shiny. 
we're used to seeing shiny. This one isn't shiny, it's dull. But it won gold medals overseas, especially in Baden-Baden. Uh, it will climb to 10 feet. It does not have the hybrid T form. It's got a very informal form, and as it opens, the center is more golden than yellow, as you can see. It's not orange. I mean, if you really flatten it out, it's definitely yellow, but when it holds it in like that, it just kind of glows at you, that golden color. Golden Gate. This is Jean LaJoy. It's a miniature from SEMA. Medium pink, slight fragrance. Small, will go 10 feet. A little miniature. It also has a sport that is white called Snowfall. Snowfall looks exactly like this, except it's white. However, the first bloom in the spring for Snowfall, it's pink like its mother. But all the rest of the time, it's white. Very strange mutation. Night Owl, a really dramatic purple rose. It's a climber, and again, it'll go about 12 feet tall. Very spicy, that old-fashioned clove smell that we associate with the older roses. And the clusters are fairly decently tight with a white eye. It makes a, a big dramatic splash in the garden. These, because it has more petals than your Rhapsody in Blue, will last three or four days before it starts giving it up. The color on this one doesn't fade to the blue color that Rhapsody has. They stay in the more purple, and then it goes to the purple-brown. You know how some purples go to the fig color? Fig of a, a, a brown turkey fig is a kind of a brownish. I don't know as a cut rose. I've never brought one in. But I suppose if you condition it, it might stay a week. But it's got a good fragrance. It'll really stink up the house for you. Mm -hmm. Pearly Gates. This is a very nice pinkish pastel, almost a silver pink bloomer. It uh, bloom This is one that blooms on the old and the new wood. So for this one, it doesn't matter when you cut it, you're always going to be able to get blooms. Very spicy. It'll go maybe 10 to 12 feet tall. It um, kind of likes muggy heat. So it's better in the Midwest than it is here where we're dry. But since our weather is changing, I put it in the program because within another five years, we're going to be muggier than we are now. Here's polka. Excellent rose in the East Bay. It's from Mayand, apricot blend. Lovely, crinkly, old-fashioned face. Very nice. It can go about 15 feet tall. This is a miniature called Climbing Rainbow's End. It's a sport of the bush variety, Rainbow's End. Rainbow's End, as a bush, has nice, long, for a miniature, about 10 inches tall, cutting stems with these perfect little blooms on the top. The climber has stems about two inches. But if the bush tries to bloom at the bottom of the bush, you'll get the long bush stems. It's very strange. Um, I got rid of my bush because I had the climber and when I found out it was doing this at the bottom, then I've got it going both ways. If I want to enter it as exhibition, it's Rainbow's End with long stems. It works, very disease resistant, a nice rose. Sets hips so readily, you've got to continually deadhead. This thing is just a hip monster. Rosarium Uderson. This is a beautiful pink climber. With this one, never recommend it to a novice grower. This one does take three, sometimes four, even into five years to really get going. It will sit there, it will act like a bush, it will have three or four roses on it, and then the next year you're lucky if you get 10, and the year after you might get a dozen over the season. 
until it finally reaches that state of maturity where it takes off. And then kaboom, 15 feet and roses all over the place. So a beginner would give up. So you know what you're going to get if you go shopping for this one. It's beautiful, however. Really, really nice. Here's Sambrue. This is a large flowered climber. We used to think it was an old garden rose, but it's not. They finally tracked down most of its ancestry. And um, the, you see the records from a couple of hundred years ago get mixed up. And most of the heritage groups now believe that the rose that we call Labiche is actually the old garden rose that was Sambrue, but now we've got the Sambrue name on this, so she kept Labiche as her name. So anyway, Sambrue is a climber, large flowered climber. It is lovely, a creamy white, flat bloom, maybe about two inches tall and nice and round, smells wonderful and blooms over and over and over. And will take a little bit of shade. So this one you might try. It is very pretty. Here's Souvenir de la Malmaison. This one comes in two versions, the bush and the climber. And I am told that the climber is better. It's a bourbon, very light pink, quartered, spicy fragrance. The climbing version will go about 12 feet tall. Here's Sunny June. This is a shrub. Deep yellow that fades to the light yellow and finally goes to white, and that's it. It obviously is a single. It will grow to eight feet tall. The thing that's really nice about this is the blooms are about three and a half to four inches across, about that big going around. And some rose societies have um, the English box for shrub roses. This is a shrub. And if you show six of these in perfect condition against a green or a black velvet background in an English box, it will win every time. This is a very dramatic rose. And her stamens are golden yellow. This is Westerland. Westerland is now a shrub. Westerland used to be a floribunda, a climbing floribunda, a climber, and now it's a shrub with a climbing habit. They did, did, goofed around. Cordis was controlling, and he wouldn't tell us, or they wouldn't tell us, the ancestry until just recently, when it finally settled as a shrub. So it's a shrub rose. It's a lovely rose. It is a light peachy apricot, very vigorous, seldom, seldom gets uh, diseases. And in my backyard where the sprinklers went dead, and you were talking to me about a drip system, that one got cut by squirrels and I didn't know it. I was on a trip. So it dropped all of its leaves and dried up and tried to die. But once I started watering it, it's all back again and setting buds. So I'm going to get fall blooms. No problems. It will go eight to 10 feet tall. Actually, mine goes up to the, where the roof of the garage starts, the eaves, and it doesn't seem to go much taller than that. So that's climbers, uh, just another dimension. Okay, thank you very much. Very good. Wasn't that special? She gives a great program, doesn't she? Let's give her another hand. Thank you, Jolene. Very, very good.